Ugh. What? The heck? You're supposed to be awake by now. Patricia, what's today? It's Sunday. It's Sunday? Yep. I thought it was Friday. Nope, it's Sunday. How the... How do I get out of here? Who did this to me? What in the world? Oh, hi, Lucas. That's the that's the statue's name. Um, uh, uh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go to church. I'm gonna be yeah, late. I'm gonna have to late. figure out how to get out of here. Uh, -huh. uh, um, uh, who did this to me? It's probably Zoe, I think, maybe. I don't know. Hey, Patricia, how do I get out of here? You have to go through the nether portal. Okay. Yeah, that one over there. Right there? Uh-huh. Right there, over there? Yeah, you have the one right, All right. there. Yeah. Here we go. Alright, good luck. Have huh. fun. <sighs> Alright, let's see if this works. Alright. One, two, three! Ugh! Hi guys, welcome back to Bedrock Kids Online. I'm so glad that you're joining us this morning. That was really weird. I woke up in Minecraft. Last night I was playing it before I went to bed and I fell asleep at my desk and I woke up and I was in the game. It was so weird, but my cat helped me get back, so it's okay. All right, I hope that you guys had a really good week. I don't know if it feels like this to you, but it feels like school has been going on forever. It feels like it's almost endless. I can't wait to go back to church in person because I miss all of you. This week in the mail, I received a picture of our sponsor kid. Can you see her? Yeah, you can see her really well. She's so freaking cute. And I got a picture of my sponsor kid that I sponsored by myself because I sent money to them too. This one's Marina. And if you don't know this girl, her name's Anita. Um, but kind of like us right now, they're on, they, they have to stay home too. Um, but their country's a little bit more strict, so if you go outside, you can actually get in trouble. So they're kind of stuck in their, um, in the place that they live right now. I bet to get through this tough time for them, they're having a lot of determination. So this month, we've talked a lot about determination, and I've told you what it is every week. So this time, I'm just going to sit here and be quiet and see if you can tell me what it means. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. No? All right, if you somehow forgotten determination means that deciding it's worth it to finish what you have started. Also, um, I really have to pop my toes. Uh, so I'm gonna let you hear me pop my toes, ready? All right, we're gonna go ahead and hop into today's story. So uh, sit back, buckle up, grab a snack. Let's go. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters six and seven. So today's story starts with a man named Stephen, and Stephen was the type of guy that you would like to have as a friend. He was really dependable, somebody that you could count on, and he could tell really nice and epic stories. So then an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush, and he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stephen was always willing to help out. Hey, let me carry that for you. Or offer a word of encouragement. I know this is tough, but you've got God's spirit to help. In fact, when somebody needed help, they actually thought of Stephen. You see, the new church was growing really quickly, and there were people that needed food and care, so the apostles came up with a plan. It wouldn't be right for us to give up teaching God's word to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, 
Choose seven of your men. They must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. Pick Stephen. He rescued my kitten from that tall sycamore tree. He helped my family while I was sick and couldn't work in the fields. Stephen, you're in. So Stephen and six others were chosen to help take care of the believers. God filled Stephen with extra grace and power to help him do this. Wowzers. You can see that Jesus is with him. Not everybody was happy about it. And instead of being thankful and joyful for the work that God was doing through Stephen, they instead decided to argue with him. No one does something for nothing. What's in all this goody goody act for you? My friend, Jesus said the most important thing is to love God and love others. That's all I'm doing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Stephen had a wise and correct answer for every question that they threw at him. So since they weren't getting through to him by asking questions, they decided to be rude in another way. They began to tell lies about him. Just like this lie right here. Stephen picks his nose. But we don't really know if it's true. And if it's true, we shouldn't be spreading that. So just kidding, don't say that. I heard Stephen speak evil things against Moses and against God. This stirred up the religious leaders and they were angry. They had Stephen arrested and brought in front of their gathering. Speaking of arresting people, in all of our Bible stories, these people have been arresting so many people, they're like arrest happy. That is so rude. Do not arrest people for no reason. I haven't done anything wrong. This fella, he speaks against the law. I heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this plague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Jesus will change the practices that Moses gave to us. <laughs> Everyone looked straight at Stephen, even the high priest. He doesn't seem upset. His face, it's like, like an angel's. <clears throat> Is what these people are saying true? He looked at the angry faces that are around him, and he knew that these people could do literally anything to him. They could have him killed or beaten. But he also knew that no matter what, God was by his side. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Stephen wanted these leaders to understand that Jesus was not just some small town rebel. Jesus was the fulfillment of a plan that God has had since the beginning of time, since Abraham. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. Leave your country and your people, God said. Go to the land I will show you. Stephen continued to talk about the various events in the Bible, such as Jacob, uh, Joseph, uh, the slaves in Egypt. The religious leaders listened and they couldn't take their eyes off of Stephen. He reminded them of God's word through Moses to free the Israelites. He spoke of David and Solomon and took a deep breath and then got to the heart of his story. You stubborn people, you won't listen. You are just like your people of long ago. Was there ever a prophet your people didn't try to hurt? And now you have handed God's promised one, Jesus, over to his enemies. You have killed him. How dare you? Stephen, filled with God's spirit, held his ground. And as he looked up, he noticed that God had shown him a vision of heaven. I see heaven open. Jesus is standing at God's right hand. The religious leaders were so angry, they refused to listen to anything that Stephen had to say. I'm telling you the truth. Rough hands grabbed Stephen and led him outside. A young man named Saul watched as the leaders brought Stephen outside the city walls under the scorching sun. Here, let me take care of your coats. Still filled with anger, the leaders left their coats with Saul and then began throwing stones at Stephen. After all of the mean things that the leaders have done to him, Stephen's last words were still filled with love. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Jesus had told his followers to live out his love everywhere. And through the power of God, Stephen was able to live out his love until his last breath. Well, that's the end of today's story. Um, today's story was really incredible. Um, Stephen decided to trust God and stand strong in what he believed. Even though we don't know how anything will turn out, heck, we don't even know what's going to happen in the next hour or minute or year. God knows each and every part of our stories and knows the end of his one big story too. God knows what kind of car you're going to get when you're older, what college you go to, who you'll marry, what your kids' names will be, what my kids' names will be, how many cats I'll have, how many cheeseburgers Ethan will eat in his life, how many diapers have been changed for Lucas. He even knows where Samira's cat goes when he disappears for like two weeks. All right, that's all I have planned for today, and I'll be seeing you guys soon. Ciao. Hold on, wait, hold on. Don't start the worship yet. Hold on, one more thing. I forgot the bottom line in the memory verse. 
So the bottom line for this week is keep going because God knows the end of the story. He knows everything about your life and about my life and your parents' lives. And our memory verse for this month is Galatians 6, 9, which says, let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we would gather a crop if we don't give up. So sorry for the interruption. Um, play worship. Have fun. Bye. You spoke one word and the dark became light. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to life. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. I want to sing about it. I want to scream and shout it. Everything I need, you are.